The question posed today is Why do we need a Guru? Who is a Guru? And why should we surrender to the Guru? Well, look at it this way. In your profession, if you get the correct mentor, it can be the best blessing to leapfrog your career. In the sports field, the presence of a mentor becomes a huge asset. In your health matters, a mentor providing you with judicious advice for your well-being is such a blessing. In spirituality, that mentor is called the Guru. Etymologically, the word has two roots, Gu and Ru. Gu shabdas tvandhakara syat ru shabdas tannirodhakaha andhakara nirodhatvat guru rityabhidhiyate Gu means darkness. Ru means one who dispels. That personality who dispels the darkness of ignorance from within us and brings us to the light of divine knowledge is the Guru. There is a story about Adi Jagat Guru Shankaracharya. He had four prime disciples, Hastamalak, Sureshwara Acharya, Trotaka Acharya and Padmapad. It is said that Padmapad, when he first went to his Guru, was illiterate. However, he had tremendous faith in Shankaracharya. And when the students would sit in class, he would just sit and gaze at his spiritual master's face. One day, it was time for the class. The students urged, Shankaracharya Gurudev, kindly begin. He responded, Sanand is not here as yet. Let's wait for him. Sanand at that time had taken his Guru's clothes, crossed the stream and was washing them on the other bank. The student said, Gurudev, he doesn't understand anything. What is the relevance of his presence in class? Shankaracharya said, that is right, but he listens with so much of faith. To show the power of faith in the Guru, Shankaracharya called out, Sanand! The disciple at that time was busy washing when he heard his Guru's voice and in the desire to come rushing, he left the clothes and started running on the stream. The story says that because of his Shraddha, wherever he placed his feet, lotuses blossomed from below. And when he reached, he lay down prostrate, offering his obeisance. By the blessings of Shankaracharya, Praises for the Guru in sophisticated Sanskrit emanated from the mouth of Sonant. Because the lotus flowers had blossomed from under his feet, thenceforth he became known as Padmapad. He was placed in charge of the Govardhan Mat, one of the four peats that Shankaracharya established. The Vedas themselves are definitely the ultimate authority of Vedic knowledge. Bhutam Bhavyam Bhavishyancha Sarvan Vedat Prasadhyati. However, they are extremely complex and for an ordinary soul to try and understand becomes an impossible task. Shrutir vibhinna smritayo vibhinna naiko munir yasya vacha pramanam. The more we read, the more confused we become. Here it says this, there it says that. 
Hence the Vedas themselves state, Acharyavan Purusho Hi Veda, understand us through an Acharya. How should that Acharya be? Let's read about it from my latest book, Questions You Always Wanted to Ask. The Guru is a divine personality. As per the Vedas, the Guru must possess two qualifications, Shrotriya and Brahmanisht. The Mundaka Upanishad states, Tad Vigyanartham Sa Guru Meva Bhigachet Samit Panihi Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam To realize the absolute truth, approach with faith a Guru who is both Shrotriya and Brahmanisht. What do these two terms mean? Shrotriya means a knower of the scriptures. Brahmanisht means one who has realized those truths and is situated in that platform. Such a theoretical plus practically realized saint is called Shrotriya Brahmanisht Guru. So, Pani Piyo Chan Ke, Guru Badao Jan Ke. We must not jump to conclusions. We must search and find. And finally, when we are convinced that this personality is truly a Guru and we can now rely on the guidance of that sage, at that point, we should then surrender our intellect. There is a story in the scriptures of Guru Ayodhamya and many of his illustrious disciples. One of them was Aruni, who later on became famous as Uddalak. One day, in the ashram of Guru Ayodhamya, there was tremendous rain and Guruji became worried. He called his disciples and said, Our Paddy fields must be flooded with water. There's a good chance that the embankment is being compromised and the water is flowing out. We will need to secure the water within the embankments, else the paddy will not grow. And if that happens, what will you all eat next year? He sent one disciple. That disciple discovered a break in the mud embankment. He tried to seal it up, but the flow of the water was so strong, it just pushed away the mud. He returned and said, Gurudev, I was unable to do it. The Guru sent another disciple and then another. They all came back unsuccessful. Finally, Ayodhamya said to Aruni, Aruni was an unlettered disciple, but he had great faith in his Guru. Ayodhamya said, Beta, you will need to secure the paddy field, otherwise all will be in trouble. Aruni walked out. By then it had become night. He too discovered the break and tried to seal it like his Guru Bhais. But as before, the flow of water would take away the mud. However, Aruni was determined, I must fulfill my Guru's Agya to me. And since the mud was not holding, he lay by the side and became a human embankment. In the morning, Aruni used to come to serve Ayodhamya. When he did not arrive at 4 a.m., Guruji asked, Where is Aruni? The other disciples responded, He had gone to the field at night and he did not return. Guruji now went out rushing and said, My child Aruni, where are you? He was lying in the paddy field and responded, Gurudev, here I am. 
If you instruct, I will get up, but the water will flow away. Ayodhamya came running, seeing his disciple's body stiff in the cold, wet in the water. Guruji had tears in his eyes. He lifted Aruni and embraced him. And the Vedas say, by the Guru's grace, the import of all the Vedic scriptures got revealed in the heart of the surrendered disciple. Hence the Shvetashvata Upanishad states, Yasya Deve Para Bhaktihi Yatha Deve Tatha Gurau Tasyaite Kathita Hyartha Prakashyante Mahatmanaha. Look, the Vedas are definitely a divine body of knowledge. The Guru is a divine personality. There will be some aspects of their knowledge which you will be able to understand right away and they will be kind enough to explain. But there will always be some pieces of the jigsaw which will not be evident to you right away. There you must have faith. You must be willing to surrender this intellect. And the Upanishadic mantra is encouraging us that those who learn to have the implicit faith in the Guru as a representative of God and are willing to surrender the intellect to such souls by the grace of God that flows through the Guru the import of the Vedic knowledge gets revealed in the heart. This is why we need a Guru, the right Guru, and then we must surrender to such a Guru. Krishna Bhakti app, a sacred reservoir of Vedic wisdom and devotion offering a wide range of features to enhance your spiritual journey. Listen to enlightening discourses by none other than the renowned global speaker and spiritual leader Swami Mukundanand himself. Download the Radha Krishna Bhakti app and embark on an enlightening journey today.